So the New Orleans Saints beat the Atlanta Falcons 27 to 26 yesterday afternoon in the Falcons season home opener of the NFL 2022 season. But how can that be? Matt Ryan's gone. We should be winning games. The Falcons blew a 16 point lead to the, to the New Orleans Saints in the fourth quarter. But how can that be? Matt Ryan's gone. That shouldn't be happening. We should be winning games. We, should, we shouldn't be blowing leads anymore. He's the problem. Sorry, I had to throw in a dig because some of you people just irritate me to death with your stupid takes and constantly falling into that stupid narrative of if a team wins, it's because of the quarterback. And if a team loses, it's because of the quarterback. So anyway, um, let's start with where things went downhill in the fourth quarter. So there's 12 minutes and 41 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. The Falcons are up 26 to 10, and I'm pretty sure that every Falcon fan felt comfortable that they wouldn't blow this lead. Jameis Winston completes a pass deep to the right side of the field to Juwan Johnson for 26 yards, and he was talking about A.J. Terrell. He was able to find a soft spot in the zone on the right side of the field. A.J. Terrell was playing underneath, and Jalen Hawkins was up top, so he was able to get between them. Jameis Winston completes another pass in the middle of the field to Alvin Kamara for 15 yards. Jameis completes a deep pass to Jarvis Landry for 31 yard completion. He was tackled by Richie Grant and Jarvis just runs up the field free. Jameis then throws a three yard touchdown pass to Michael Thomas. He was covered by AJ Terrell. He threw a bullet. Then the Saints convert a two point conversion by completing a pass to Chris Olaf. I hope I'm saying his name right. So just like that, it's 18 to 26. The Saints just went down and scored in what? Under a minute? Just like that because the Falcons decided to play soft coverage. Hadn't been doing that all game. So now the Falcons have the ball. Marcus Mariota throws an incomplete pass to Drake London. Corda Patterson runs for four yards, gets tackled by Carl Granderson. Mariota completes a pass to Drake London for 13 yards. Corda Patterson gets tackled for a loss of two yards by Cameron Jordan and Demaro Davis. Now, instead of having him run up the field and try and run through the line of scrimmage, which he was having success all day long, they decide to run out to the left. Marcus completes a pass to Cardero Hodge for nine yards, tackled by Pete Warner. Cordero Patterson runs for a yard before he was tackled by Shai Tuttle and, and Cameron Jordan. It's third and three. Cordero Patterson runs for a yard before he's tackled by Shai Tuttle and Cameron Jordan. Now, he could have gotten the first, but he slipped, unfortunately. Of course he did. Of course he slipped because Things like this happens to Atlanta. Only in Atlanta, folks. Guys slipping, playing soft coverage, bad decision making, you know, the whole nine yards. So the Saints get the ball back with seven minutes left and five seconds on the clock. The Falcons are still playing soft coverage. James completes a 20 yard pass to Chris Olav on the same side of the field from their last drive, a similar type of play. He then completes a short pass to Jarvis Landry for seven yards. He throws an incomplete pass to Juwan Johnson. He completes another deep pass to Michael Thomas, which looked like a wheel route, and the Falcons were playing man to man, and so they had Jarvis Landry kind of have his route crash into AJ Terrell to kind of knock him off balance so that Michael Thomas could get free. It didn't phase him too much, but either way, Michael Thomas still made a fantastic play on the football, and the Saints converted a 21 yard conversion. Jameis throws a short pass to Alvin Kamara. They try to do a screen, but he's tackled by Michael Walker. So it's second and 20. Right? Second and 20. So the Falcons still have a chance to get the Saints off the field and keep them from scoring points. Or at worst, they would kick a field goal. But no, they decided to blitz and play off the Saints receivers like 10 or 15 yards, give them so much cushion. So Jameis throws a pass to Michael Thomas in the middle of the field for 20 yards, tackled by Jalen Hawkins. And just like that, it's first and 10. Went from second and 20 to first and 10, all because you you played soft. Jameis Winston throws an incomplete pass to Michael Thomas, but the penalty was on Ada to Kunbo Angoje. Angondeje. He was in the neutral zone. So penalties rearing his ugly head once again for this team. One of the many things that have plagued this team for so long now. But hey, that's Matt Ryan's fault. That was always Matt Ryan's fault. You know, that shouldn't be happening. So from first and 10, it goes to first and five. Jameis throws a complete pass to Jarvis Lynch for 14 yards. Tackled by Richie Grant. They get to Atlanta's nine inside the 10 yard line. Jameis throws a touchdown pass to Michael Thomas for nine yards for a touchdown. He beat AJ Terrell yet again. And just like that, 24 to 26. So it went from being a 16 point game to now a two point game. The Saints tried to convert yet another two point conversion, but it was a horrible play call. They stuffed Mark Ingram. So now Atlanta has the ball. So they still have a chance to salt this away. And that's the thing with these Falcons meltdowns. 
is that they still have a chance to get out of a game with a win. They still have a chance to stop the bleeding. Just do the, the smart thing, the right thing. But they don't do it. They don't do it. <sighs> Marcus Mariota runs up the middle for seven yards before he's tackled by Demaro Davis. Cordell Patterson runs for eight yards. Person 10, Atlanta. Cordell Patterson runs for six yards. So they're getting back to what brought them so much success during the game the first three quarters. Marcus Mariota gets tackled for a two yard loss by Pete Warner. They try to do an RPO rather than just keep handing the ball to Cordell Patterson and have him run up the middle of the field. But if he gets stuffed, at worst, you don't lose anything. So now it's third and six. Marcus Mariota throws a deep pass, which was a horrible pass to Alameda Zacchaeus, but luckily Atlanta gets bailed out by Lash by Larshawn, by Marshawn Lattimore for defensive holding. So the Falcons stay alive. And that was another thing about this game is that the Saints kept trying to give you the game. They kept trying to give them the game. But Atlanta just said, no, you know, we want to keep losing games like this. So you guys can have this game. Cordell Patterson runs up the middle for a yard. Marcus Mariota runs for eight yards. It's third and one. It looks like the Falcons are going to try and QB sneak it. And the Saints look like they were getting ready because they were pitch in the middle of that line of scrimmage. Marcus Mariota bobbles the snap, he recovers it, but he does not convert the first down and is tackled by DeMario Davis. But how can that be? He's a leader, he's the GOAT. He's gonna do the damn thing this season. That's all the stupid crap that I was reading off of social media this off season. He's a leader, he's the GOAT. Okay, well he's not coming through in the clutch. Fourth and one, the Falcons punt the ball to New Orleans and Deontay Hardy fair catches it at the 10 yard line. But there was a holding penalty on Liam McCall. So once again, penalties, something that has plagued this team for so long, rears its ugly head. So rather than have the Saints drive down the field at the 10 yard line, sort of try to make things a little bit difficult for them, even though they have been gashing you for yards and yards and chunks of yards past two drives, you could have at least pinned them back at their own 10 yard line and had them drive a good length of the field. But with the way things were going, I doubt Atlanta probably would have stopped them anyway. Jameis Winston throws a deep 40 yard pass to Richie Grant. Casey Hayward lets him go. I don't know why. I guess he was expecting help from Richie Grant over the top, but Casey Hayward lets him go. Jarvis Landry catches a beautiful ball. I mean, an athletic catch. Jameis spikes the ball, but he gets called for intentional grounding for 10 yards. So it's second and 20. So here we go again. Second and 20, you got a chance to knock them out of field goal range. Jameis easily completes a 17 yard pass in the middle of the field to Juwan Johnson. Jameis spikes the ball again. Will Lutz kicks the 51 yard field goal, 27 to 26. Falcons have a chance. Marcus Mariota throws an incomplete pass to Kyle Pitts. He throws another incomplete pass. Can't remember which of those two plays it was, but, but the play design for one of those plays, actually for all of those plays, were awful. But one of them in particular sticks out to me the most was that you had your wide receivers run to the middle of the field to where New Orleans can just migrate to the middle of the field and have a chance to pick it off. Marcus Mariota throws a complete pass to Cordell Patterson for 10 yards. He completes another pass to Cordell Patterson for five yards, but Marshawn Lattimore gets a unnecessary roughness call for 15 yards. Young Wei Koo tries to kick a 63 yard field goal. It is blocked, Saints win, Falcons choke yet again. I mean, all you can do is just throw your hands up in the air and just laugh because this crap keeps happening. I don't know why. I didn't believe in the whole curse thing at first. I thought it was silly. I just thought it was just bad coaching and bad situations and bad decision making. But I'm starting to think maybe this franchise is cursed because teams make comebacks against Atlanta. Atlanta's don't make comebacks against teams. When was the last historic comeback the Falcons had? I bet you the 2008 Detroit Lions would love to face the Falcons. If they could, if they could like, how should I put this? Go back in time and pull this 2022 Falcons team with them or the 2021 2020 team with them so they can get a win I think they would do it I went into this game I went into this season very low expectations because I had picked the Falcons to win like five games and then I got sucked in as I always do because they played so well they did think that I have been complaining about for years for years they ran the ball for a total of 201 yards had two rushing touchdowns. They sacked New Orleans, sorry. They sacked Jameis Winston four times. They created turnovers. They got the Saints off the field on third down. The offensive line did pretty well. The Saints had no sacks, no sacks. You kept Cameron Jordan in check. You kept that defensive front in check for the most part. Say what? If you had told me that 
the Falcons would have done that to the Saints, I wouldn't have believed you. Now, if you had told me that they would have done that and then still lose to the Saints, then I would have believed you. <laughs> I don't know. And then Arthur Smith kind of snapped at the media saying, you guys thought we were dead and you guys, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but saying that we had no chance and yada, yada, yada. He's mad. I get it. But look, dude, this is a franchise that is accustomed to losing, that has had so many chances to do great things. So many chances. But for whatever reason, they get to the door and they can't kick it in. They get to the door and the neighbor's dog chases them away. And you getting upset at the media doesn't help. You and that coaching staff and the rest of that coaching staff blew this game, I would say. Not putting all the blame solely on the coaching staff, but you guys, for whatever reason, decided to deem peas. For whatever reason, decided to let New Orleans off the hook. You were up 16 points. Why play soft? And I think you took out your starting personnel. I know some players that weren't really on the field for the first three quarters. Why are you playing soft? You did a fantastic job of confusing Jameis, disguising your blitzes, having your defensive end fall back in coverage and then bring a linebacker in to get a free shot at Jameis Winston. You ran the ball very well. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Let's... Uh get into some of the players as i mentioned the falcons got a total of 201 yards total on the ground ran the ball 38 times got two touchdowns got 26 first downs netted a total of 215 passing yards through the air 416 yards total three fumbles you lost two of them you had two turnovers you had eight penalties which cost you 55 yards total you were five for 13 on third down conversions you won the time of you won the time of possession 33 minutes and 44 seconds marcus mariota 20 for 33 215 yards passing he ran the ball 12 times had 72 rushing attempts had a rushing touchdown but he had two fumbles and lost one as i was watching the game live I was saying to myself, he did not look good to me. I thought he was okay, and then he had those two fumbles, and then I thought he played bad. But when I rewatched the game, when I calmed down, I guess I say he had a game where you could say, for me, I could say that it was one of those good and bad type of games, good, ugly, and the bad type of games. It's hard to like give it a grade, but my thing with Marcus Mariota, first of all, I just want to say that. I'm going to go ahead and confidently say that this first game proves my theory. My theory that I had with Arthur Smith's game plan. That he was going to run the ball, dominate at the line of scrimmage, and establish a running game so he can set up the play action and bootlegs. And he did that. That was the offense. I think he's going to try and do that this entire season. But here's the thing. I'm all for that. But teams are not going to let you just run all over them and let you push them left and right and backwards and create running lanes. They're not going to let you just manhandle them at the line of scrimmage. So how are you going to combat that? You have to create some better passing plays. I think that Arthur Smith doesn't do a good job of creating passing plays. There were a few times in this game where Atlanta was forced to throw the ball. It seemed like it looked like the receivers were running the routes in the middle of the field or going one direction rather than spread them out and have them go in multiple different directions for trying to like pull the Saints defenders out of their zone assignments like have someone go underneath and then that'll free up somebody on the sideline um but with Marcus I still see a guy who can't really push the ball down the field I'm sorry even though I thought he wasn't terrible in this game he wasn't terrible but you know he had two bad turnovers which is hilarious because he's the GOAT and he's gonna do the damn thing he's gonna kill it right he's mobile we got a mobile quarterback. Matt Ryan wasn't da 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 and all, all those other stupid crap that I saw on social media. Well, you know what? Matt might not have been mobile, but he did push the ball down the field. And with Marcus, if the running game is not going, and if he's not able to do play actions and bootlegs, and if someone is not wide open as soon as he goes through his reads, I don't think he's going to try and take a chance. I don't. And if I'm the Rams, which they play next week, I'm looking at this Falcons team and I'm saying to myself, okay, if we can stop the run, we stop their offense. Because I'm not terrified of Marcus Mariota and his throwing ability. I'm not too intimidated by Arthur Smith's past play designs. It's the first game. He still has a chance to prove me wrong. This team has a chance to prove me wrong. I have very low expectations. And I will not get excited for this team anymore. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to stay in my lane. And I'm going to stop rambling now. Um, anyway, uh, Cordell Patterson. 22 for 120 rushing yards, one touchdown. He was targeted five times, had three 
receptions, 16 yards. I don't know what he is. He was a monster, okay? He, he was, without a doubt, the best player on the field offensively to me, but I don't know what he is. Last season, I thought that they should have kept him at the wide receiver position and then utilized running backs, you know, traditional running backs in the running game. But he seems to be very effective at the running back position. Avery Williams, two rushing attempts, seven yards, targeted one time, one reception for eight yards. He was quiet. Drake London, targeted seven times, five receptions, 74 yards total. I thought he had a nice day. He was okay. Alameda Zacchaeus, targeted four times, four receptions, 49 yards. He had a fumble, another turnover. For the Falcons. Cadero Hodge, three targets, three receptions, 38 yards total. Kyle Pitts, seven targets, two receptions, 19 yards. You cannot have that, okay? Again, going back to Arthur Smith, you gotta you gotta find a way to get this guy loose. Only two receptions, and plus they were in the red zone multiple times. And you don't try to get him the ball. Everyone else was pretty quiet. Defensively, Grady Jarrett, one and a half sacks, five combined tackles, three solo tackles, two assist tackles. One tackle for loss, two hits on the QB. Michael Walker, one sack, six combined tackles, four solo tackles, two assist tackles, two tackles for loss, one hit on the QB. Arnold Epichetti, one sack, one combined tackle, one solo tackle, one tackle for loss, one hit on the QB. Lorenzo Carter, half sack, two combined tackles, one solo tackle, one assist tackle, two hits on the QB. Richie Grant, 10 combined tackles, five solo tackles, five assist tackles, one QB hit. Sean Evans, six combined tackles, three solo tackles, three assist tackles, one fumble recovery, which he ran for 11 yards. Jalen Hawkins, he had a chance to pick off Jameis early in the game. Six combined tackles, five solo tackles, one assist tackle. AJ Terrell, five combined tackles, four solo tackles, one assist tackle. He gave up two touchdowns, though. People have been kind of killing Terrell. I don't know. I I just think it's one of those where you, you gotta give a good wide receiver like Michael Thomas credit. It wasn't like he was getting beat like Michael Thomas ran a route so beautifully and so perfect that AJ Terrell fell on his ass or anything like that. Everyone else was pretty quiet. Now time for the Saints. The Saints, 18 first downs, 19 rushing attempts, 151 yards, one rushing touchdown. They ended it 234 yards. They had 385 yards total, one fumble, one lost fumble one turnover. They had eight penalties for 99 yards total. They had eight penalties that cost them 99 yards. Four for 13 on third downs. 26 minutes and 16 seconds time of possession. Jameis Winston, 23 for 34, 269 yards, two touchdowns. He was sacked four times. Even though he cranked it up in the fourth quarter, he he was very good at in the fourth quarter. I still have to say overall he was Taysom Hill, four rushing attempts, 81 yards, one rushing touchdown. After that, he was pretty quiet. He needs to be the guy that runs the ball, the guy that is involved in punt fakes. Okay, he is a wild card as I like to call him. I don't think he is a very good quarterback and he should not be New Orleans future quarterback, but as a Falcons fan, I hope he does become the quarterback because I don't think he's been very good whenever he has been the quarterback for the Saints. Alvin Kamara, nine rushing attempts, 39 yards. He was targeted four times, three receptions. I thought they should have involved him more in the passing game when they were getting outclassed because Alvin Kamara is a game changer. Utilize him in screens, try to get him involved out the backfield, sort of try to try to center your offense around him a little bit more because early on, Michael Thomas looked pretty rusty until the fourth quarter. Mark Ingram, four rushing attempts, 22 yards total. Jarvis Landry, nine targets, seven receptions, 114 yards. He cranked it up in the fourth. Michael Thomas, eight targets, Five receptions, 57 yards total, two touchdowns. Not the prettiest stat line, but it was definitely pretty in the fourth quarter. He looked like the Michael Thomas of old. Um, Juwan Johnson, five targets, two receptions, 43 yards. Everyone else was pretty quiet. Defensively for the Saints, I mean, I mean, a quiet day overall. Um, Pete Warner, 13 combined tackles, 12 solo tackles, one assist, one tackle for loss. A lot of guys had a lot of combined tackles. Cameron Jordan was held in check. He had one tackle for loss. Tyron Matthew, he, you know what, I take that back. Pete Warner, he did have a forced fumble. Marcus May, he had a forced fumble. Tyron Matthew, he had a fumble recovery. Demario Davis, he had a hit on the QB. Yeah, but I think overall the Saints defense was kept in check. They weren't really as dominant as they have been in recent years. The Falcons faced the Rams next week. Okay, I did think that they did look solid. They they show some things that I have been wanting for years now. A running game, pass rush, turnovers. Well, they had a turnover, but still, they almost had three 
actually. They got the Saints off the field on third down situations. Can they do that again against the Rams? I don't know. I mean, Buffalo did it, but Buffalo's defense is way better than the Falcons. So, And I don't know if they're going to get to Stafford like they did Jameis. And I don't know if they're going to be able to replicate what Buffalo did because, again, Buffalo's defense is way better, in my opinion. So we'll see. As far as the Saints go, uh, the Saints have a chance to really put an early stranglehold on this division because they face the Bucks next week. And since Brady has been in Tampa, they have pretty much owned them. Uh, thankfully, they didn't own them in the playoffs still. Jameis Winston, I think Jameis Winston is a good quarterback. I think he can be able to help get them back to the promised land if he just plays smart and tries to take care of the football. They, I still think the division is going to come down to Tampa and New Orleans because I think those are the two best teams in the division right now. Who I think will win it, I don't know. It could be Tampa. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But um, how many times are you going to say I, I don't know? But yeah, we'll see. This video went on a lot longer than I expected it would. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing these every Monday, doing analysis Falcon videos because if you can't tell, I am a Falcon fan, unfortunately. <laughs> now, my channel won't solely be on Falcons coverage. I will talk about other teams. So if you are a Falcons fan, please like it and subscribe. If you are just a football fan in general, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And that is it. I am out.